Welcome back to Think Thrice Problem Solving. Today we're going to be solving a fun problem from the International Mathematics Olympiad, a very challenging secondary school exam. Uh, this problem is not too tough if we go with the right strategy, but it takes a lot of intuition to kind of figure out where to go with this. So our problem, we have a function that maps integers to integers, and we know that f of 2a plus 2f of b is equal to the composite function f of f of a plus b. So pause the video if you'd like to try on your own. Otherwise, let's go ahead and get started. So you'll know that typically in these problems, the strategies we use often involve either taking inverses or um, looking at known points. So what we're going to do here is we're going to look at known points. So let's look at the point where a is equal to 0. So my function then becomes f of 0 plus 2f of b is equal to f of f of a plus b, so 0 plus b, which is just b. Okay, and then instead, if I had evaluated at a equals 1, I would have f of 2 plus 2f of b is equal to the composite function f of f of b plus a, which is b plus 1. So now what I'm going to do is I notice that in the first equation I had a equals 0. So let's look at a equals 0 again. But let's set b, I'm going to call it b bar, equal to b plus 1. So we're basically setting the b in our green equation equal to b plus 1. So then we can write our equation, once again, f of 0 plus 2 f of b plus 1 is equal to f of f of b plus 1. Because b was just an arbitrary variable, so that means that if I plug in b plus 1, I should be able to get the same thing. So the green and purple equations are essentially the same equation. But now we notice something pretty cool. So on the right side of our equations, I get f of f of b plus 1 for both of these. And what that means is that the left side of each of those equations will be equivalent. So if we do f of 2 plus 2f of b, that's going to be equal to f of 0 plus 2f of b plus 1. So let's rearrange a little bit, and I'm going to get f of 2 minus f of 0 is equal to 2f of b plus 1 minus 2f of b. And what I notice here, so let's divide both sides by 2, and I'm going to get f of 2 minus f of 0 divided by 2 is equal to <clears throat> f of b plus 1 minus f of b. Okay, so this is a pretty important stage we've gotten to right here. So this number on the left, so I have my function evaluated 2 and my function evaluated 0 divided by 2. So this is going to be some constant value. Okay, so that's never going to change because my function is going to be set. And what I have on the right side, I have f of b plus 1 minus f of b. These are sequential terms because I'm evaluating it all um, integers. So what we can see here is that I have what's called an arithmetic um, growth to my equation, which means that I'm adding the same amount, this f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2, every time. So if I take, if I have b, I use the next term up, so to add 1 to that, I'm going to be adding this term on the left. So that means that my equation is going to be in the general form where f of x is equal to, I have a and b already, so let's call it cx plus d, because I'm going to have some starting value and then every time I'm just adding that same c. Alright, so Let's look at these different equations now. So I have um, this value right here. Let's look back at my green equation up here and pull that down. So I have f of 0 plus 2f of b is f of f of b. So let's go ahead and use that. So if I have f of 0 plus 2f of b is equal to f of f of b. Let's make sure I wrote that down correctly. 
I did. So now let's plug in our equation here. So we have CX plus D. So I'm going to have C times 0 plus D plus 2 times C times B plus D plus C times, or sorry, equals C times B plus D plus D. So let's kind of rearrange here. So this guy goes away. I notice I have a D on both sides of my equation right there. So let's simplify this. We're going to get 2CB plus 2D is equal to C squared B plus CD. So I'm going to rearrange just a little bit more so that we can see it's going to be B times 2C minus C squared plus D times 2 minus C is equal to 0. All right, so one thing we know, so C and D are constants. So these are parameters in our equations. B is our variable, which can be changing. So what does that mean? If we can plug in any B value and this equation needs to work, that means that 2c minus c squared must equal 0. And the second term, d times 2 minus c, must also equal 0. So if we look at 2c minus c squared, that's equal to 2 minus c times c. So we can see that either c equals 0 or c equals 2. So if we look at our second equation where we have d times 2 minus c is equal to 0, if c equals 0, then 2d is equal to 0 and d is equal to 0. If c is equal to 2, then we have 0 times d is equal to 0, which will work for any d value. And remember that we have to output an integer, so d will have to be an integer as well. So we've actually developed our full set of solutions now. So what we've determined was that f of x had to be of the form cx plus d. So our two solutions are f of x equals 0, that's from this guy up here, or f of x is equal to 2x plus d with d an element of the integers. And that is our full solution. These are the only possible equations that will work. I hope you enjoyed working through this problem with me. If you did, please like and subscribe. If you have your own problem you'd like me to work through and solve, please submit it. As you're working through problems on your own and you get stuck, think once, think twice, and if you're really stuck, think thrice.